Hello, I'm Jakaria Shine and I am the project and research manager. Hello, my name is Emily Cherian and I'm the project coordinator and creative design lead for Team Reinventive. In the top of every slide, you can find whichever step of the engineering design process that we are on. Step one of the engineering design process is to identify and define a problem. The problem that we focused on was inspired by how 20 year old Disney star Cameron Boyce died while asleep due to an ongoing medical condition called epilepsy. I will now play a news broadcast from the day after he died. Joy, this is really a tough loss for so many. We have learned that Cameron Boyce died yesterday at the age of 20. He was asleep. His family says he had a seizure that was because of an ongoing medical condition. But nonetheless, fans really all over the world will be mourning his loss. Ready for our date? <laughs> Disney fans fell in love with Cameron Boyce years ago when he played Luke Ross, the laid back and crafty child of the Ross family in their hit show, Jesse. But Boyce's acting career actually started at nine years old, appearing in music videos and soap operas and quickly moved to the big screen, even playing Adam Sandler's kid in the flick Grown Ups. But Cameron Boyce was more than just a budding star. The 20 year old was also a philanthropist, raising money for the Thirst Project, which provides clean water for underdeveloped countries. And he was also an advocate for the homeless. His mother first brought him to Home Walk years ago, which raises money in LA for homeless issues. Again, Cameron Boyce, just 20 years old, dying in his sleep yesterday after suffering some sort of a seizure. I constantly think of his death in ways that his family could have been alerted, or ways that his seizure indicators could have been tracked while he was sleeping. I ask myself, why do people die in their sleep? This year, Emily and I explored the most common causes of death while sleeping with the hopes of finding a solution. Step two was to gather more information. While doing research, these were common causes of death while sleeping in people younger than 25, like Cameron Boyce. According to the National Association of Rare Diseases, sudden infant death syndrome is the leading cause of death in infants. According to the Sleep Foundation, toddlers suffer death from drugs and toxins while sleeping. Finally, according to WebMD, teenagers have increased chances of cardiac arrest because of phone usage. We utilize this research to help us understand what to look for in a possible solution. We took the liberty of identifying the requirements for the invention based on what we learned while doing research. We found a solution that had all these requirements that we did not consider last year. Step three, identify possible solutions. So, similar to last year's solution, our idea is to develop wearable technology that tracks certain factors that increase the risk of people passing away in their sleep. This information is sent to the reinventive app. The wearable technology comes in different forms depending on the wearer's age and any other accommodations that they need. The app notably monitors and logs the wearer's movement and important vital signs such as the wearer's temperature and heart rate. Step four was to create a prototype. This is the prototype that was showcased last year. We used a pre-existing model on how to build a smartwatch using an Arduino Nano, Sulu parts, and LED indicator. There were many possible uses for the simple system, but we modified it to fit inside of the sweatbands last year. The bands couldn't detect all the factors, but after some adjustments, we had gotten much closer. This year, we sketched possible designs for the prototype and listed the materials and their prices beforehand. We also improved the material list and swapped out the older parts for newer, more compact versions. Here's a picture of the materials that went to this year's final prototype. The pictures showcase the modified system, including the base sensors and trackers, as well as the transmitter. Since each band had a sensor, the person wearing the watch will be able to monitor their vitals. A trusted guardian can monitor vital signs and take action if immediate care is needed. If the symptoms persist, the paramedics are alerted. Here's the sample of the website. There's the homepage and example of what a product page would look like. 
We set the price to $28 for one set. Depending on the wearer's age, they can purchase different wearable devices that have the same technology embedded in them and add-ons. For example, infants prefer our durable water-resistant wristbands that are made of a softer material similar to sweatbands. I will now walk you through the steps of using the health risk system. Step one, download the reinventive app. The app then asks the wearer to input basic information about themselves. Step two, link the app and the wearable items. The app can sense the bands based on the location so they automatically link. Step three, wear the bands. Each band has a label that tells the wearer how to wear it. Step four, begin your day or sleeping. The only thing that a wearer has to do is click that they are going to begin their day or sleep. The app and the bands take care of the rest. We, test, we tested the product on all of my siblings. I monitored their comfortability levels and asked if they had any comments. I also recorded some of my own observations. Based on last year's observations and my siblings' comments, I decided to make some adjustments. For example, I included more band sizes and more colors later in the design process. I also made the sensors removable and water resistant. This year, we made some more changes to the overall design after meeting with our experts. Our experts work for Upper Laboratories, which is a healthcare company well known for its medical devices and nutritional products. They all have different backgrounds with studies ranging from biomedical to electrical and computer engineering. Step six was to refine. The experts did enjoy our presentation and they were very helpful with providing advice for how to modify last year's prototype on a budget. They encouraged us to try our best to get as close as the real thing as possible. Based on their advice, we adjusted the prototype and app to be convertible from day to night. The recommended day system is the wristband, whereas the recommended night system is the sweatband for maximum comfortability level. Out with the old, in with the new. Last year, I felt uncertain about where this project was going. But this year, with the help of Emily, we redirected and modified the previous design with brand new innovative ideas. This year, we went back to the drawing board to reevaluate our solution and come up with a better idea, such as the change between the night and day band. We feel strongly about this idea and that it would be a valuable solution to help people under 25 years of age with medical conditions that affect sleep like epilepsy. These were our resources that we used for research and for the photographs that were displayed. We will now show off our prototype. Emily is actually wearing our prototype for this year. And as you can see, it's this lovely flower. <laughs> it looks amazing on the wrist and it works perfectly. Inside of this is all the components that we listed in the presentation and it works. There is a temperature sensor inside of this and a heart rate sensor. It is also a movement sensor and it has this little clasp that you can see right here. And this information is supposed to be sent to the reinventive app that tracks aware of symptoms every day and can log it for up to a year. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>